Hello everyone, we are back and today we are going to talk about the early Islamic empires as I have here, the successors to Muhammad and beyond, uh, the first couple hundred years here of actual Islamic empires and the things that they were able to accomplish. Now, let's remember when last we left off, we talked about the early leaders or the caliphs after Muhammad died, you had Abu Bakr, who took control of the Saudi Peninsula. You had Umar, who was able to spread it out and conquer pretty much the Holy Land right through here. And this is Iraq and a lot of Iran, and then took over Egypt. And then after he was assassinated, you had Uthman, who was able to take over uh, North Africa here, a little bit into Tunisia, the rest of Iran out here, and then into Pakistan, Afghanistan, and some other stands. Then, of course, we had our period of civil war when Ali was finally named the caliph and everybody hated him and he was assassinated. There was a war and, of course, the Shia were defeated. After they were defeated, you actually have your first dynasty, you know, the rule by a family, and that would be the Umayyad Caliphate, which would rule from 661 to 750. And that was founded by uh, Muwiyah ibn Abi Sufayan. Look it up. He would actually move the capital a little bit out of no longer working from Mecca, but rather, if I go back here, he would work out of Damascus, which is right up here in Syria, which as you can see has a nice centralized location. Now, the Umayyads would massively expand. If you can see here, when Muhammad died, they had this, and then up to 661, which we reviewed, and then under the Umayyads to 715, they would control the rest of northern Africa, they would conquer Spain, and actually get into the rest of Pakistan, and even into parts of India. Massive expansion, and of course with massive expansion came massive conversion as well. However, in one of the most pitiful pivotal battles in the history of man, and we're actually talking about two of those here, you have the Battle of Tours, or sometimes called the Battle of Poitiers, in France. Now, if you get the joke, great. If not, I'm sorry. The Muslims were continuing to advance into Europe until they were finally met and defeated by the Franks at the Battle of Tours. They were led by Charles Martel, who is depicted as this guy, I'm sorry, no, this guy right here, better known as Charles the Hammer, that was able to defeat the Muslims from advancing. Now we could have a decidedly different history. Could all of Europe have been conquered by the Muslims? I don't know. The Franks were pretty much the only group that was left around that could possibly do anything to stop them. So that was a huge battle. Nonetheless, the Muslims will then withdraw, and they will actually really try not, not try to um, get into France really ever again. They'll rather just set up in Spain, but rule in Spain for the most part until 1492. Now, we'll be getting into the achievements later, but after about, I don't know, 50 years of their empire, they started to ha have problems. And one of the big issues that they actually have is that they started to favor Arabs. Now, initially, what you had in the Arabic empires is you could worship whatever you wanted, everything was okay, you really didn't have a problem. I mean, you'd pay a tax if you wanted to not be a Muslim, but for the most part, people were left alone. That would change during the later Umayyad period because what they started to do was to favor the Arabic people. Only Arabs could hold government positions. That tax, or the tax often known as jizya, was increased later on. Um, people start getting alienated. In other words, you know, they're, they're losing opportunities to trade. Ethnic groups will start to fight and want their own empires. Uh, particularly the Persians, as we'll talk about it. And the rulers actually had a lot of infighting. And when you put all those things together, the empire would finally fall as it would in the year 750. Now, right on their heels in 750 was the creation of a longer-lived empire, the Abbasid Empire, which would last from 750 to 1268. This was an incredibly powerful empire. Um, it was started by a Persian, the name of Abu al-Abbas. So uh, here you actually have a non-Arabic ruler. 
they would really achieve many great things. But as you can see here, they're going to be a little bit smaller. The In Spain and Northern Africa, they're going to break off and actually form their own caliphate. And the Umayyads are going to hold on there. Everything else, they're still going to have. And as you can see here, they're starting to creep into Turkey where they're going to start to go after the Byzantines. And the empire will still be pretty stable. Now, once again, you have another huge battle that would change history, the Battle of Talas, which took place in modern-day Kyrgyzstan. As you can see, the slightly small arrow will tell you where it's at, right above India. Now, the reason why this is crucial is this is the time of the Tang Empire. The Tang Empire, one of the largest empires in the history of China. As you can see here, this was the area that they started with. They then would stretch all the way out over here, so they're going from the Pacific all the way into northern India. They control all this area too. Everything within the line here that I'm pointing the mouse to was controlled by them or under tributary states. But they were finally stopped. They were stopped on their advance by the Abbasids. And this is huge because then we wonder what could have possibly happened to the Arab empires and then these Persian empires had they not been, um, you know, attacked or had they not been uh, successful in defeating the Chinese. And so, you know, they end up on one bad end of a battle, but then come out on the top end of a battle. Now, the Abbasid Empire really would flourish. Uh, the trade routes are just going to go huge, and we're going to be talking about that. They're very cosmopolitan. They stop favoring Arabs. Um, they would allow people to be in the government if you were qualified. They got rid of the tax on businesses. Uh, they also got rid of taxes on religion. Now, the top positions were still Arabic or sometimes Persian. Um... And all Muslims had great opportunity to move up on the social ladder. But in the end, the, you know, the Muslims were still kind of in charge. Now, the biggest moment for them was the conversion of the Turks. That is a gigantic deal, and we will talk about this moving forward, because the Turks are going to form some of the strongest empires in the ancient Medieval, medieval period, which is going to be huge, or the Middle Ages. And they will also eventually be the ones that conquer the Byzantines. They also convert lots of other people, and they became great builders. On the right here, you see a mosque at their great city of Samara, uh, which is really, really interesting. You see how people can climb up to the top of it. But the Abbasids would just grow and grow and really have a lot of success. Uh, their greatest leader was Harun al-Rashid, and he was the one that took the city of Baghdad to new heights. If you look on the right there, that is what it is said that Baghdad looked like during the reign of Harun al-Rashid. They basically grew a garden and, you know, had hand-dug rivers in the middle of a desert. And Baghdad is going to become the center of learning and scholarship, and we're going to be talking about that as well. But it was really huge. Now, in the end, they do not last forever, and you had two things that happened to them. One was internal fracturing. Um, some of the problems that they had was losing the um, Spanish and some of the North African provinces to the Umayyads and some other caliphates. Uh, you also had ethnic issues of Persians and Turks also not liking being run by the Arabs. But then in the end, as is depicted over here, is in a siege, the Mongols showed up. So when the Mongols show up, we tend to know how that happens, and they would conquer the Abbasids. But nonetheless, the Muslims would expand, their empires would have tremendous success, but more importantly, even though the Arabs don't necessarily rule these areas today, all of these areas converted to Islam, and it hasn't changed since. Okay, get your questions, get your comments, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.